Anyway, this is the final video in the playlist where we're looking at the Edexcel foundation paper and it's the June 2018 series. Um, in the previous video we completed to question number 22 and we're going to start this video from question number 23. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you're not sure about anything please add a comment below, I'll always come back to you. Okay, so we've got uh, question number 23 which is a square based pyramid and the first part of the question is they're asking us to draw the front elevation and they give us um, a little arrow here and basically they want us to draw what we see. Well, you've got to kind of imagine that you're a very small, let's say you're a little spider okay <laughs> and you're looking at this massive great pyramid well basically all you can see from a front elevation point of view is just simply a triangle okay you don't know there's any sides or uh, bottom to it or the back or what the back looks like you just can see a triangle so what they're really asking us to do on the paper itself is to draw a triangle where the bottom of it is the same uh, width which is six so that's three four five six and the height of it and if you go back to the diagram you'll see the height is four so we're going to go four okay and then basically join those lines up like that and that will be the front elevation okay so the next part of it is to work out the surface the total surface area of the pyramid well um, i'm going to need to swap backwards and forwards but if you do get a copy of the paper you should be able to see what i'm going to do because effectively there are four triangular sides one of which we've just drawn actually but there's this triangle this triangle the back triangle and the other side triangle and then we've also got a square base so what i'm going to do is work out the area of each of those and then add them together so that will give me then the total surface area of the pyramid so each side okay each side is the area of a triangle. Um, you might do it slightly differently to me. I tend to write a half base times height, okay? Now with some people, they might write base times height divided by two, and that's perfectly fine as well, okay? So if we go back to the diagram, we've got a half, the base is going to be six, which we've drawn. Now you've got to be very careful because the height of the triangle is in this particular case, the slant height. It's not the vertical height of the overall pyramid, which was four, it's actually the slant height. In other words, the triangle itself has got a height of five, okay? So six times five is 30 and a half of 30 is going to be 15. So that means each side of the pyramid is 15. Okay, let's have a look then at the base. Well, again, if you go back to the drawing, you've got the base, okay? And the base is simply six times six because it's actually just a normal square, okay? So the total surface area, I have to add four of those, and one of those. So the total is going to be 36, which is the square, plus four lots of 15, okay? And when I add all of that together, I'm going to get 96 centimeters squared. And that would be the answer to this particular question. Hope that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number 24. Uh, question number 24 is a little bit trickier. Um, it does take a little bit of time to kind of work through, but basically you need to think about where we are on a grid rather than trying to kind of work this out by halves and quarters, at least not initially. You'll see what I mean, because if we think about this point here, this is six um, along on the X axis and this is 38 along on the x-axis as well. The difference between the two is actually 32. Okay, so 38, take away six is 32. 
which must mean then that each of the lengths along here, of which there's four of them, and they're all the same, each of these must be eight, okay? But the important thing with this is that the information tells you it's four identical squares, okay? So it's actually eight from here and eight down here as well, okay? So, if we need to find out the coordinates of C, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, C must be from 6 plus 8 plus 8. So we've got 8 along here, 8 along here, so it's going to be 8, uh, 6 plus 16, okay? So that's going to equal 22 on the x-axis. And then again, if we look on the y-axis, it's going to be coming down from 36 at the very top. It's rather difficult on the video, but 36 on the very top, okay? And then I'm gonna come down 16, because it's two lots of eight to get to point C, okay? So on the y-axis, it's going to be, C is going to be 36, minus 16, which is equal to 20, and that's on the y-axis, okay? So if I put those two together, it means then the coordinate of point C is going to be 22, 20. Okay, hope that's all right for you, and that would complete that particular question. Okay, so we've only got two more questions to go, so we'll work through those. Okay, and we've got question number 25. Okay, so on to question number 25. So we're very close towards the end of this particular uh, paper as well, which is good. And it says on the grid below, draw the graph of that for the values of x from minus three to three. Okay, well, probably the easiest way to do this is to work out the values of y when x is these various values. Also, um, I think it is fair to point out that this is going to be a straight line because it's a single value of x. If it was x squared, it would be a curve, it'd be a quadratic, but this is just gonna be a straight line. So let's plug these values in and see what happens. I've got x and y, and as it, um, as it asked me to, I'm gonna start with minus three, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and finally 3. And then I'm going to work out the values of y for each of those numbers. Okay, so the hardest part of this probably is going to be dealing with the negative numbers. But let's, let's try that first. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to write y equals 1 minus 4. And rather than writing x, I'm going to put minus 3 into there. Now you need to remember that minus 4 and minus 3 are multiplied together, so it's actually this times this first. So if you remember bid mass, we always do the multiplication before we do the subtraction or addition. Okay, so minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12, so that's going to give me 1 plus 12, so therefore when x is minus 3, the value of y is going to be 13. And then really it's a case of duplicating that for all the other values, so when x is minus 2, y equals 1, minus 4 times minus 2, minus 4 times minus 2 is 8, 1 plus 8 is 9, so that's going to be 9 in there. And then y equals 1 minus 4 times minus 1. Again, work that through. That's going to be 5. So that's going to be 5. OK. So the negative numbers, I think, are sometimes the more difficult ones. OK. When we're dealing with 0, again, if we plug it into the actual formula itself, it's going to be 1 minus 4 times 0, which is going to be 0. So 1 minus 0 is just going to be 1, OK? The rest of them I think you can possibly do by mental arithmetic. So we've got 4 times 1 is going to be 4, and 1 minus 4 is going to be minus 3, OK? 2 times 4 
is going to be 8, so that's 1 minus 8 is going to be minus 7. And then 4 times 3 is 12. 1 minus 12 is going to be minus 11. Okay, hope that's all right for you. You've been able to follow that through. It is just a video, so um, I appreciate that people might do that slightly differently, but that would be the way I would do it because I've got to bear in mind that if any of these are wrong, I'm not going to get a straight line, and that's my important thing. I need to get a straight line out of this. So when it comes to actually plotting it on the grid itself, you need to be mindful of this whole point that it needs to have this nice straight line going through it. So the first one is going to be minus 3, 13. So I'm going to go along to x is minus 3, up to minus 13. So I'm going to put a point there. Okay. And then I've got uh, minus 2, 9. So minus 2 and 9, another point there. Minus 1 and 5, point there. 0 and 1 point there, it's looking good so far because all of those dots are in a nice, a nice straight line, so that's okay. And then I've got 1 minus 3, okay. I've got 2 minus 7, that's going to be there. And then finally I've got 3 minus 11, which is down here, probably off the video slightly, but that's okay because when we join this up, hopefully you'll be able to see there we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see that uh, I can just draw that. Okay, uh, remember and bear in mind, it is a straight line, so you can extend this line past the end of the graph if you wanted to. It's perfectly fine to do that. Okay, and that would be the answer to this particular question. Okay, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on to question number 26, which at long last is the end of the particular paper, okay? And we're looking at a vector question, column vectors, which is just basically showing a movement on a graph, okay? So we've got a vector A, uh, which tells me that we're moving a point five along towards the right and then two up, okay? Uh, we don't need to know that for this particular type of question because the first thing is they're asking us to work out two lots of A, okay? So two lots of A is simply doubling each of those numbers. So 2A is going to be 10 and 4, okay? And we're going to add that to the values of B. So plus B, which is minus 1 and 7, okay? So 10 plus minus 1 is going to be 10 minus 1, which is 9. And then 4 plus 7 is going to be 11. And a very straightforward question, providing you know what you're doing uh, for the very end of this particular paper, and that is the last question. Okay, I hope it's been useful for you. Please do have a look at the other videos within the playlist for this uh, foundation paper. Please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.